My name is Noah Zafun Jones Barrison, and I am 22 years old, Philadelphia resident, and I grew up here, and I live here now uh, in Old City, and I make beats for rappers and singers, and I, I guess I'm a producer. You kind of demonstrate, how does it work? Yeah, um, so basically was it, what it is, in the best way to describe it, Amazing. It's kind of like an accordion from space because you gotta play buttons instead of keys and it's got weird stuff, but it's, you, know, you get all, up to all kinds of crazy things. And my favorite mode is probably this purple mode right here. It's like an arpeggio. special effects build, a bass line, and a whole bunch of crazy synth noises that I can go chop up. I can put them on this NPC and sample them. I can put them on the keys here and sample them. I can, you know, but it's the most fun time to be living in music because there's just absolutely no rules. Yeah, whenever I turn on this old stuff, I'm always kind of um, amazed how good it sounds. And I'm always like, the newest stuff doesn't sound nearly as cool is this? <laughs> the new stuff definitely sounds is, that sounds better than this, but especially it works a lot better. This one's cutting out all the time. But we have a history. Is that one battery power? No. no, this is a, so this is the first, I guess, this is sort of the first version of the pocket piano. And it's made out of balsa wood. And it definitely looks like a prototype. You can hear stuff shaking in there. So this is how it works now. You should try these. He does a couple different color patterns. these two tape decks in two different rooms playing simultaneously. When you don't start them right at the same time, you know, they get slightly out of phase and these interesting musical things kind of grow out of that. And actually that's sort of exactly what the Collide Loop is all about too. The first tape recorders, you could obviously turn the volume up on the speaker, control the volume of the sound, and then you could put your hand on the tape reel and control the speed. So it's like it's two of the kind of most elemental features of having a recorded sound. And that's about it. That's about all you get. It kind of sounds funny in the, in the zone of electronic music where you have instruments that do, you know, hundreds of different things. Um, but keeping the instrument as simple as possible and, and, you know, thinking about a way to achieve that recording itself or recording a manipulation just by adding a new um, instrument that someone else can possibly play. So with two people and two collider loops, all of a sudden you can record what the other one's doing. If they're basically just uh, samplers, and you you start off where you record into it just like this. Mess with the pitch. You can uh, you can wake up your wife in the middle of the night with some David Lynch. Oscar, 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 Oscar. 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 How are these useful things to mammals? So we can let's see, we can do something like this. Go ahead, man. While we're playing, we can record a sample really fast and then manipulate it. And then when we go through and we're mixing or we're trying to write the song and we have a section where we want to put some interesting sounds or just kind of vary it up a little bit, we can do that because it, it'll be recorded and looped and then we can just kind of tweak it and have fun. 
and it just adds texture <laughs> in any spots that you need it. And then if you have two of them, it just... Exactly. And adding things like maybe we'll add you saying your name, and then we'll see if you want to record that. I'm Peter Crimmins. 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 I think we should let this go for another hour and see where the hell we go.